Greetings and salutations. Welcome back to Colin's Last Stand right here on YouTube. My name is Colin Moriarty. As always, I appreciate you being here with me. I appreciate your time. I hope you and yours are very well. And for all of you people out there, I guess Americans and others, Canadians, etc., that celebrated Labor Day this past weekend, well, I hope you had a great and restful Labor Day weekend. I sure did. So I had long planned to do an episode today on Colin Kaepernick, the ex-San Francisco 49ers quarterback who has found himself in some, I guess, like social drama and political trouble and stuff. And he doesn't have a job anymore. And a lot of people think it's because of racism and all of that. And I happen to be a massive football fan, as many of you out there know. And since the football season starts tomorrow when you're seeing this video, I figure the Colin Kaepernick tie-in might make some sense. But then all this stuff started happening with DACA a piece of legislation we're going to get into in this video a little bit. And it started to kind of kind of tug at me to do a video instead on illegal immigration and specifically what I would do to solve illegal immigration in the United States, at least solve that problem, because it is a massive problem and it's a problem that needs a solution. And of course, I have a solution. So this video is dedicated to that. And of course, I will also be curious what you think of my solution. So let's just get into the video and I'll let my words do the talking. Whatever that means. Illegal immigration is very easily one of the most persistent issues prominently featured in American politics over the last three decades. It's not a new problem, of course. People have been illegally coming to the United States since its founding, and there are lots of people who have had a problem with that also since the founding. But it's an issue that's reached a sort of fever pitch in recent years. For many Americans, including me, illegal immigration is a massive problem. It's a problem that, like a can, has been kicked down the road time and time again. It's a conundrum that needs to be solved, once and for all. But solving this massive problem, in my opinion, requires equally massive doses of sympathy, kindness, and understanding. America at large has always had a little bit of a nativist slant, which stands in stark juxtaposition to its status as world history's deepest and most inclusive melting pot. It's important that, to fix the problem once and for all, we resist those deep urges of exclusivity, and instead look at the situation from a, well, more humanistic standpoint because we as Americans are perfectly capable of showing love, just as we're world famous for showing force. It's a sad American tradition that those who are already here and already settled look down on those who come next. Whether you're Irish or German or Scandinavian or Chinese or Italian or Jewish or Catholic or Japanese or Korean or whatever else, it's fair to say that at some point in American history, existing Americans had a problem with your ancestors coming to these shores. But in the spirit of fairness, we've also never before in American history faced this particular problem in relation to illegal immigration. Never before have we had between 11 and 12 million illegal immigrants in the country for a prolonged period of time, along with all of the issues that brings, particularly with their kids, the source of the recent DACA, Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals fiasco. It's all run headlong into this never-ending generational tradition that maybe we don't need immigrants anymore that maybe we're good as is and have nothing left to collect from people outside of our borders. I don't agree, of course. Many don't. But how do we get out of this problem that's beginning to be as complicated as it is old? To be upfront, I don't want this video to be about DACA or about already existing legislative agendas or even about the failed history of trying to solve this problem in the past. I'm not even looking to change anyone's mind, because ultimately, this is a deep-seated issue that will require more than just an episode of Colin's Last Stand to fix. Instead, I want to focus on what we can do to solve this long-simmering issue once and for all. What steps can we take? What sequence can we walk? What balls could we put into play that will alleviate us from ever having to think about this or discuss this beaten down issue ever again? I don't want to convince you that I'm right or that you're wrong. Instead, I want to give you something comprehensive to stew on, a series of ideas that I really do believe, if instituted, would constitute a fair approach for everyone, fair treatment for the illegal immigrants, a fair shake for legal immigrants and those waiting to legally enter the country, and most importantly, yes, by far most importantly, a reasonable solution for the 320 million of us or so that by birthright, by blood, and by history call the United States home. I want to say something up front though, because I think there will be some people who will walk away thinking I'm for a blanket amnesty or open borders, which I'm not. I'm not excusing the actions of illegal immigrants. I would never do that. It's completely 100% their fault that they find themselves in such dire straits. They chose to come here. They, in many instances, chose to bring their children here. And they ultimately chose to expose themselves to the full weight and consequence of the American justice system. All of that aside from DACA, of course. But the blame doesn't stop there. It's also our fault. The fault of our government, our presidents, our legislative bodies, and our voters. 
that this problem has gone unchecked for so long that, voila, years have passed. These people are still here, many for years and decades. They are, as immigrants before them, a cog in the wheel of America, fabric in America's tapestry. They are workers, business owners, taxpayers, parents, aunts and uncles, grandpas and grandmas, etc. I think that these people should be encouraged to come out of the shadows and join the American family not only in spirit, which many of them already have, but in reality, which many of them are desperate to do, no matter the cost. I think, by and large, they should be allowed to stay, and I don't think citizenship is even a requirement to make all of that a reality. Merely legalizing their existence here will do, with many caveats attached, of course. It's these caveats that really are at the center of this entire issue for me, because I don't agree with the entire blanket amnesty, immediate citizenship solution. I think that's a terrible solution that's clearly never going to happen. But I also don't believe in this really heinous, inhumane situation where we would go around, send people, rounding people up and, and throwing them out. That's just that's just not American. And when I see someone like Donald Trump, who's a buffoon, do something like suspend DACA, which doesn't really serve any purpose, well, I don't really get it. You want to take these kids out of their homes when they don't know any other country? What kind of American would do that? After I graduated college, I moved to San Francisco, and for a period of time, one of the guys I lived with dated this other guy who was an illegal immigrant. He didn't speak a lick of English, at least at first. Initially, he and I only acknowledged each other in head nods. He worked hard, kept his head down, and was rightly terrified of being deported. Over time, as his boyfriend taught him some rudimentary English, I got to know him just a little better. I got to know a bit about his story about what drove him to come to the U.S. and how desperate he was to stay, to be above board, to do what was right. It destroyed this abstract notion of illegal immigrants and illegal immigration I had and replaced it with a face, a body, a name, and a narrative. Thank God I had that experience because it tempered a rather nativist immigration stance that I had developed over many years. I never had a problem with legal immigration. Both my mom's side and my dad's side spawned from legal immigration after all. But I had a huge problem with illegal immigration. That young man changed my mind. He probably doesn't even know it either. And he didn't change my mind on illegal immigration as an act. He merely gave me a glimpse into the life and times of the millions of people just like him who were living in the shadows. It tugged at my emotions and changed my outlook forever. See, you have to be pretty desperate to come to the United States illegally. It's not something people just do for fun just because. It is an incredibly dangerous and unpredictable ordeal. Will you hire a coyote, trek through the desert, maybe get injured along the way or get robbed or raped or left for dead? Maybe a solo mission is in order, scaling a fence or wall or swimming across a river or hiding in a vehicle crossing the border. Or perhaps you simply come in with a passport and never leave. However you come in and for whatever reason you stay, all signs point to seeking a better life, a better way to do things, a more productive, successful, lucrative, and safe reality. That reality could turn to hell though. You can't report crimes committed against you or expect any sort of safety net or help if you find yourself in trouble. You could be deported at any time, separated from friends, and even family, even your own children, or your own spouse. Just think about that for a minute. Whether or not you can agree with people coming here to find a better life, I think we can all agree that we can understand why they do and what they risk to do so. In some abstract yet obvious way, it's a great testament to the United States that people continue to fall all over themselves, often putting themselves at existential risk just to be here, just to get a chance. That says something. But enough chatter about the problem and the realities. It's time to talk about a solution, and doing so requires us to set a foundation. So here's what I would do if I held all the cards or can make these various people and bodies act to my liking. From a high level, the United States Congress needs to pass a multi-tiered bill that will be comprehensive in nature, exacting in its approach, and a stone wall to ever finding ourselves in this situation in the future. That starts with something that must be spelled out in black and white before we get into anything that the legislation could do for people. Any person who enters the United States illegally after the date of the legislation will be deported if they are found out. No questions asked, no ifs, ands, or buts. To deal with the illegal immigrant population that is here, that we identify as at least tangentially American, we must first ensure that we never have to deal with a new group in the future, which will likely require a far more secure border and far harsher penalties for those who choose to come here illegally. Anyone who chooses to ignore the U.S. Congress in this regard will therefore do so at their own risk. This is, by the way, the way most countries work. Try to walk on into China or overstay your visa in Russia and watch what happens to you. If you're caught, you're out, whether you have a job or a family or a business or whatever else. So buyer beware. The U.S. has every right to protect its borders, and it has every right to determine who is legally allowed to stay and who isn't. Bucking that responsibility brought us here to begin with. We mustn't do it again. 
The second foundational element that needs to be discussed is our system of so-called jus soli birthright citizenship. The United States is the only major industrialized first world country on planet Earth that practices birthright citizenship in the manner we do. That is to say, if you are born on American soil, you are American. It's complete lunacy, and as everyone knows, it's through a bastardized reading of the 14th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution that this even occurs. The 14th Amendment was, of course, designed to integrate freed slaves into the legal realm of America by, in part, giving them citizenship. Any legislation must come with the ultimate exterior legislative push to amend the Constitution so that the U.S. practices so-called jus sanguinis citizenship. That is to say, you are an American by blood if one of your parents is also an American. This solves the problem of taking parents from their kids or encouraging illegal immigrants to have children in the U.S. and all of the other underpinnings that exponentially complicate the situation. Once these foundations are laid down, we can then pivot to what legislation could do to help these millions of people living in the shadows, because we will have ensured, written out for all to see, that this is a one-time deal and to not expect the American people to be quite so generous and forgiving a second time around. I fear that without this foundation, which sounds kind of harsh in reality, we will find ourselves back in the situation we find ourselves in right now, because as you know, this wouldn't be the first push for amnesty or the fir first push for mass legalized entrance for a group of people. This actually happened under Reagan, and you can read about that. So securing the border and ensuring that illegal immigrants aren't coming and going quite so easily or anywhere near as easily as they are now is one step to the equation, but also really dealing with the 14th Amendment and birthright citizenship is another. Anyone who tells you that it's racist or it's un-American and all those kinds of things to do something about birthright citizenship is ignorant because no Western country acts the way we do. You aren't a French person if you are born in France. You're a French person if you are born to a French person. Not rocket science. At the outset, the legislation in question should immediately give legal status to illegal immigrants who choose to come out of the shadows, report themselves to the authorities, and give basic information to state and federal governments by a certain date. The only exception will be illegal immigrants who committed a felony while here. Those people will be immediately deported. The legislation should guarantee that none of the information being collected will be used against those giving the information up, which is an ongoing fear with the changes being implemented in regard to DACA, and that the idea is to simply know who's who and what's what. Legal status will come with a new social security number type system that can be used on certain documentation to acquire a driver's license or a bank account or to buy a home or whatever else. This new legal status would, unlike a green card, be permanent and would be transferable to children who were born to legal immigrants. Their children would, in turn, become legal immigrants. Why permanent when green card holders have to reapply every decade? It's frankly not worth the bureaucratic hassle, especially when you're talking about millions and millions of people. And as you're about to find out, there are disadvantages, some serious, to this new class of legalized immigrant when compared to green card holders. Any illegal immigrant who chooses not to take advantage of this offer within the time frame spelled out in the legislation will continue to be illegal and will face deportation if and when found, regardless of how long they've resided in the U.S. and regardless of if they own a home, a business, or have family here. No exceptions. This new form of legal status will come strapped with a series of caveats, duties, and advantages. The major advantage, of course, is that this once illegal immigrant will now legally be able to stay in the U.S. for the rest of his or her natural life without fear of retribution, retaliation, or deportation. However, legalized immigrants would be required to pay back taxes for the duration of their illegal stay, the details of which they will need to document and submit to the federal government. And they'd also, just like citizens, those on work visas with green cards and others, be required to pay federal and state income taxes moving forward, as well as FICA. The key here is that this new class of legal immigrants will not have a right to receive benefits from FICA. Social Security and Medicare will not be an option for immigrants legalized under this legislation. In this respect, the compromise is that those with legalized status pay into the system, helping to secure it for future generations, of which hopefully their children will be a part of. The legislation will also spell out in black and white that legalized, once illegal immigrants have no specialized, expedited pathway to citizenship, which is another significant difference from this class of legal immigrant and green card holders. This new class of legalized immigrants can own property, can own businesses, can send their kids to public schools, and can enjoy most of the fruits of American society, but they will not be allowed to vote in local, state, or federal elections. If a legalized immigrant wants citizenship, they will be required to get to the back of the line, and the line will always benefit those who came through the front door. Acquiring citizenship in this regard could therefore take years, if not decades. Any legalized immigrant is allowed to get into the so-called other line, the line for those who were never illegal, but that will require them to go back to their country of origin and forfeit their legalized status. The choice ultimately is up to them, but the legislation will not force anyone into any decision. 
children of legalized immigrants, that is to say those born in America but under the new reading of the 14th Amendment, not citizens at birth, will be granted a pathway to citizenship that will give them full citizenship at age 18 as long as the rules are followed. Otherwise, those children risk becoming stateless. And any legalized immigrant can fast-track their way to citizenship by agreeing to enter into certain fields for certain periods of time, specifically in public service, whether that's in the military or police or firefighting forces, and more. So there it is, at a high level, how I do things. At least, it's a start. A place from which we can talk, narrow things down and buff things out as needed, and continue to compromise as we find a solution. And that's really what it's all about, right? Compromise. No solution is going to be perfect. Clearly, my solution isn't going to be all that perfect for either extreme, the extreme that wants inhumane and barbaric mass deportations, nor the extreme that wants open borders, and an America that's, well, not so American. I truly believe that a vast, vast, vast majority of the 12 million or so people here illegally are good, solid people, and I think that we won't be disappointed that we did right by them. If we do, and it doesn't work out, feel free to tell me I'm wrong in the future. In the meantime, what's wrong is not doing anything about the problem to begin with. I'm not a member of Congress or an elected official, and I just gave you a comprehensive plan to solve the problem. I'm pretty sure that if that signals anything, it's that you should expect far more from those who you send to Washington, D.C. A YouTuber just laid out a perfectly reasonable plan. What's their excuse? All right, that's it for this episode of Colin's Last Stand. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a little impromptu, and I'm really happy that I made that choice, actually, because this is something that I've wanted to talk about in the past and that I am sure we will talk about in the future. And obviously, my plan isn't foolproof. Obviously, you could poke holes in it. Obviously, there are things we have not thought about, but that's what the comments are for. So I hope to hear from you in the comments. I'll be down there talking to you. Let me know what you thought, whether you like my ideas or not, and feel free to add some additions or, or suggest some sub subtractions that we could kind of you know further hone this idea and really do something for this illegal immigrant population that I really think we should help, that I really think we should bring out of the shadows, because I think the situation is unfortunate, and I think anyone that points only at them as being at fault is ignoring our complicity as a society for ignoring it as if it didn't exist for so very long. I'd also appreciate if you shared the video with your friends and family and let them know about the magic and majesty of Colin's Last Stand. And please thumb up the video if you liked it and thumb it down if you didn't. Remember that this show is completely ad-free. There are no baked-in ads, there are no ads running on YouTube, and it's all thanks to your support at patreon.com slash Colin's Last Stand, where for $1, $5, $10, whatever you want to give a month, you get special perks over there, and you allow this ad-free historical and political venture to exist completely independently of any advertisers. So thank you so much for that. All right, I will see you on Monday for more Collins Last Stand. If all goes according to plan, my dad will be here in a few days and we'll be recording a two-part episode of Collins Last Stand all about his experiences on and after 9-11. So I'm really, really excited about that. Um, and I hope you are too. So I'll see you for those episodes. In the meantime, I'm wishing you and yours very, very well. I thank you again for your time. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And as always, I hope that you keep on learning.